Ooh. All right, let me get my periscope together. Bless noon, bless noon, bless noon. How are you? I am Pamela Dobson, a.k.a. Mama Pam. And I am here to read for you seven minutes. Reading Understanding the Purpose and Power of Women by Dr. Miles Monroe. God can work a miracle. Every day in the Lord will make a way. Out of the way, I said the Lord will make a miracle. Every day in the Lord will make a way. Out of the way, just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Hey, hey, just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Dun, 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 dun. You're looking at a miracle. I expected the impossible. And God has healed my throat. So that he will let you all know that God will work a miracle. Hallelujah. Okay, y'all see me? I'm singing. I'm talking. God performed the miracle this weekend. Hey, baby girl, Cartella, tell her name. Mm -hmm. I've never seen my baby here before. My daughter-in-law, Cardella's here. Uh, daughter Gwen, Gwen Livingston, thank you for joining us. Thank you on uh, Periscope. I'm doing Facebook and I do Periscope at the same time. Thank you on Periscope. So I just a little song. I'm just feeling real good on the inside. And I saw my son yesterday. All is good. I did not broadcast yesterday because men have needs too. And that happens to be the subject today. Valencia. Hey, baby girl. That's my new Los Angeles daughter, Lincia. Valencia. Praise God. Hey, Tammy. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming on. Hey, Patricia. That's my other daughter. Hey, girl. How you doing? <laughs> Praise God. I'm just excited in God and what he has done and what he did over the weekend is still resonating in my spirit that God healed me. And then the, the, the tour was phenomenal, but that's not what we're here for. We're going to do the read first and then I'll run my mouth after. Okay, because you guys have taken off of your lunch. You come in at the noon hour and seven minutes is what I'm here to do. Seven minutes. I'm going to read. I'm reading Understanding the Purpose and Power of Women by Dr. Miles Monroe. On Facebook, I think it's backwards. On uh, Periscope, it's read the correct way. But nonetheless, that's what we do. I read seven minutes, so you don't have to. Let me pray and get into the read. Dear Heavenly Father, I do come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. And one more time and again, I say thank you for healing me. For it has been a struggle and it has been a couple of months that I was shut down and I couldn't, I couldn't talk. But God, you performed the miracle in front of people's eyes and in front of my eyes and in front of these, your people. Because they heard me last week when I left. I was talking like that, could not talk. But God, you healed me. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, now I ask that you open up the ears of the hearers, give them ears to hear, and give them spiritual eyes to see what you are saying to their church through the pages of this book. Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise, and we do call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so we are reading on page 170, and it reads, The man has a need for recreational companionship. Okay? So while the female has a need for conversation... The male has a need for recreation, recreational companionship. Notice that both of these needs have to do with sharing the company of others. This is why when the woman participates in the man's recreational interests, he will begin to converse with her. She is sharing one of his basic needs with him, and he appreciates it. Daughters, find something that the brethren is doing, Get involved. Like I said, whether you really, really enjoy it or not, I sit with my husband when he's watching the ball games. I could care less about any of them, <laughs> okay? But I'll sit and I'll have my little gadgets or I'll have a book or whatever the case may be. And then when something exciting happens, he'll say, Babe, babe, look, look again, look, look, because they always replay it. And then I get all excited and I hoop and holler with them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, what they did, that's a touchdown. Oh, that's callback. Oh, okay. <laughs> But we conversate, and he enjoys it. Mm -hmm. Then he's open to listen to what I'm saying or what I'm interested in, because then he's interested. Praise God. Thank you for inviting your visit, uh, your people, Valencia. So get involved 
in what they're involved in, and then they will communicate with us and give us an opportunity to open up and share what we have in our heart. But if we don't get involved, and daughters, sisters, that's another way they end up going some other little sister girl that'll watch the ball game with them and, and sit up and watch that picture with them. So we have to do our part, okay, in order to get them to do their part. Praise God. So I wish I could plant in the minds of women how important a man's need for recreational companionship is. It has to do with how he is designed. Because the man was created first and has a leadership nature, he seems to have an inborn need to protect his domain or territory. He is a protector. This is why a man needs to feel as if he is always winning at life. Wow, that kind of speaks on my son, doesn't it, Della May? When, when a man is, is it, my husband's not working right now. He's having a very difficult securing steady employment. And if they're not winning at life, it does something to a man because they want to provide for us. They're our protector. And when it looks like we have to do it for them, it tears them apart. We have to understand that. So this is why a man needs to feel as if he is always winning at life. You women may have noticed this trait already. This need translates into a desire to win over the competition in a sports event or to, a or to master a particular area of interest or expertise. It is this territorial nature that leads to his need for recreational companionship. He needs to be involved in challenging activities and although he likes to win, he also likes to share these experiences with others. That's where we come in. We got to pretend. We just got to pretend like we have to be interested. To be interested. <laughs> Nothing blesses a man more than when a woman is involved in his recreation. I can't emphasize enough how important this is. As I mentioned in the last section about a woman's need for conversation, if a woman participates in whatever a man enjoys doing, playing tennis, visiting his historical landmarks, playing an instrument, or designing computer programs, for example, and lets, him and lets him tell her all about them, she can strengthen her relationship with him. He will feel good when she, involves, when she is involved with him in his recreation. I mean, like if the brother man is a singer. He out there blowing all the time, singing, he's singing. And you know it's going to be groupies where the brother's singing, okay? If, that, if he's in uh, the limelight, that type of job. He want his, his queen, his woman. He want his better half right there to smile. And, and when it's over with, he can go to her, go grab her. Instead of growing, grabbing them groupies who be happy to listen to what he got to say. And happy to tell him what an awesome singer he is. And happy to build him up. Amen? So what we have to do is, we have to be involved in what they're involved in. And, and then they'll get involved in what we want to get involved in. Okay? I have seen men pick up other women who participate in their recreation activity because they need the companionship. Now see, ain't that what, the, ain't that, ain't that what my panel was just saying? Here's this a woman that's been married a few times. So I've learned a few things in those marriages, in different marriages with different men. They all desire the same thing. So here again it says, I've seen men pick up other women who participate in their recreational activity because they need the companionship. They don't want to cheat your husband as a golfer. You can't stand golf. You want to be out there watching them knock that ball around and walk around the field. Go out there, put your little pretty little clothes on, your little sun hat. Take your computer, take your book, I mean your, your tablet or your book or whatever the case may be. And when he gets ready, make sure you're focusing in on him. And when he gets ready to hit or do whatever, hollow, that's my baby, you go, honey. Ooh, honey, that was so wonderful the way you knocked that ball in that old baby. That was so, baby, you just sing so wonderful. I love the way my man sings. Because if you don't, he wants somebody to share what he's doing with them. He'll find somebody, okay? A wife may, pre may prevent this from happening if she becomes involved in her husband's interests. If a man gains a sense of accomplishment through performing music, she should become familiar with his music. I haven't read this, you guys. Trust me. This, I, I'm saying it before I'm reading it. Maybe I need to quit talking and just read it. Up. Okay. Whatever he, cons whatever he considers his form of competition or whatever he is involved in, 
that makes him feel as if he is shaping his own environment, she should become a part of it. I've heard women say things about their husbands such as, that old fool, he's always over at the ball field playing softball. I wish you would stop that and come home and be a husband. This attitude won't help the situation. He has a need that is being met. <clears throat> he has a need that is being met out there on the ball field. Why would a man spend hours on something unless he has a need that is being fulfilled through it? Duh. Why would a man spend hours on something unless he has a need that is being fulfilled through it? Some of us women have husbands who love them cars or motorcycles. And they wash them. And they clean them. And they all, and, I, and we get aggravated because he'll spend that time with me. He don't do that. Go out there with the brother. Take him some lemonade, some iced tea. Help him clean or do what baby you want me to do this rim while you're doing that one. Ooh, honey, look, at you can see yourself in your rim. Look how good I did that rim for you. Then we're going to get that affirmation that we need, that adoration that we desire. Then he can look and say, oh, baby. You did that good as me. Oh, when we rolling, we rolling together because we did this together. And you cleaned the windows for me. Oh, baby, I love you. You go back in the house and you getting ready to do whatever. He said, baby, you was out there with me. Let me let me get them dishes for you because I, I know I took a little bit of extra time. But I appreciate your being out there with me. Praise God. That was just a little sidebar. So this attitude won't help the situation. He has a need that is being met out there on the ball field. Why would a man spend hours on something unless he has a need that is being fulfilled through it? Instead of fighting against what brings fulfillment to the man, the woman should find out why it is important to him. Then, if possible, she should participate in it so that they can experience it together. Thus, building understanding, building companionship, and building intimacy in their relationship. Is that a powerful read? Praise God. It was just a little bit, and it was seven minutes. I'm sure it was seven minutes. It was more than that because I did my little interjection. But the man has a need for recreational companionship. So we're reading about understanding the purpose and power of women and the power that we have with our husbands in, in getting involved. And in, it says they like recreation, even in their jobs. There are some women who are married, and you ask them, what does their husband do? And my husband is in is sales. So what does he do? Honey, I don't know. All I know is he be selling something. Well, that's the same attitude you have with that with your husband. When he comes home from work, you have that same attitude because you don't know what he's doing. You're not trying to find out what he's doing. You're not engaged. And we, again, we read one of his needs is they need companionship, be it in the sports or in their work-a-day life. When they come in, they may say, oh, I, I had a good day. So you say, okay, well, baby, tell me a little bit more about your day. And then they begin to open up and they'll begin to talk and you guys begin to laugh and you begin to share the experiences. And, and then you may see something out and about and you come on, hey, babe, I saw such and such and it reminded me of you and your job. So we as women have power. We just got to learn how to effectively use it. Praise God. Thank you guys for joining me. Valencia, my daughter, I love you so much. And Patricia and my daughter, Della May. Okay, let me, let me I just say my daughter, Della May. Uh, you'll say, hey, baby. My other daughter, in, in, in law, granddaughter, granddaughter, in law, it just came on. Um, you guys look at the replays. Look at the replays. Look at the, at the replays. Um, I didn't come on the re on here on yesterday because my son, Hallelujah, who is a man, had a need. Praise God. He needed to see his mother. My son uh, was injured on his job on the twentieth of January. I became afflicted with whatever this mess is. Around the first part of January, all through January, all through February. The virus, whatever it is, I, every day I got it with junk in my eyes, stringy stuff in my eyes, my respiratory, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk. It was terrible. And so when my son got the condition, I couldn't run to him. I couldn't go to him. I couldn't go check on him. That's what a mama do, y'all. Okay? I mean, I know everybody, girl, your kids is grown. You leave them kids alone. I understand that. Yes, he is. He's almost 50 years old. He good and grown. And I good know he grown. But I'm still his mother. And as long as I'm his mother, a child always desires that mother there in times of, of calamity. 
They don't have to do nothing. Just be there. Case in point, I had uh, my daughter who's now 46. And when I had her, um, after I delivered her, I was running a temperature of 104, 105, and it was getting higher. They couldn't figure out what was wrong. I had her the 23rd of December. And for two days, the 20, 20, um, 23rd, all day the 24th, they poked, they prodded, they took blood tests, they took this test, that test, because they couldn't figure out what was going on with me. Finally, on the 25th, they found out. But in between time, my mother didn't live locally. She lived away. And all I'm doing, continually, asking my husband and anybody would listen, is mama called yet? Is mama here yet? They didn't have cell phones. It's not 46 years ago. We didn't have no cell phones. Didn't have no pagers. Barely just had the... um. I don't even know if they had phones in your room. Probably not in the hospital. So no one, you know, I had to ask people, have you heard from mother? Nobody here. And as I laid in the bed and people coming around loving on me and the husband's there and I appreciated that. But I wanted my mama. I, I just needed my mama. If my mama just walk in the room, I know I'll be all right. I just needed my mama. So finally, um, on Christmas, the, uh, Christmas Day, my mother was able to come. And when she walked in the room and just helped me. I was all right. That's all I need. It doesn't matter what the outcome or whatever the testing were. And what they determined I did have is I had phlebitis. I had blood clots. Um, when I had my daughter, she almost killed me. I have been almost killed a couple of times. Enemy always trying to get rid of me. He ain't going to get rid of me, though, because I'm living to be 120. According to Genesis 6 and 3, I'm going to live to be 120. So you just keep following me. <laughs> I know I'm silly. But anyway... Um, so I hadn't been able to get to my son and, and my son's body. Oh, but I've been praying. I've been praying, Lord, you sent the word and it healed them. Lord, touch my son's body, heal his body and don't let him have any odd, adverse scars and do a miraculous thing and, and heal him, Lord. And oh my God. Try not to tell too much of my kids' business because you know your kids get upset. You be telling them something, trying to indirectly not say what happened. But his body, his skin looked beautiful from where he had been injured. Oh my like, God, you are miraculous. And then I said, Me and my able to take anything self. And I am. I'm able to look at gut and gore and blood and this and that. And I wanted to go and help take care of him during this period. The condition I saw him, I wouldn't have been able to. I don't think I would have been able to see my son in that condition. So God knows what he's doing, you guys. I wanted to be there so badly, but God did not allow me to be there. But God knows what he's doing. Praise God. So I was there on time. So men have needs too. It doesn't matter how old the man is, how young the young man is. They have needs, and companionship is one of those needs. The other need is they need sex. They don't know want sex, y'all. It's not, oh, they always want sex. They need sex. In order for men to be balanced, there's something within them that God created them that they need it. We as women do not need it necessarily as much or as often as they do, but as their wife, as the godly woman, we are to give them. We are to render ourselves unto them. You know what I do sometimes, y'all? If I don't feel like it, I say I'm doing this as unto the Lord. Lord, I don't feel like I don't feel like it. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. And do you know when I do that, it's all good? It's all good. <laughs> okay. I thank you guys. I don't know if I can look back on what. Okay, yeah, I can. I can look back. Okay, Della May. I don't know if she's still. Valencia, I love you so much. Tell Mark I sent him a thing so um I can join his, his Facebook page. Give him my love. Uh, Della May. Tammy. Hey, Tammy. How are you, sweetie? That's one of my, my, my best friend's sister. My best friend in the whole wide world. I've known that girl for just about 30 years now. I'd give my life for her. Yes, I would. I'd give my life for Riri because she's been there for me. And I know if I, we don't talk. You know, me and my best friend, we do not talk every day. We don't talk every week, maybe every month. When we get together, we get together and it's just like we ain't missed a beat. If I needed her and I called her right now, she'd be here. She'd be here. That's the kind of relationship we have. And I thank God for her. And Tammy is her sister. So I just want y'all to know love, love, love her. 
Okay, and then there's Miss Patricia. That's my other wonderful Los Angeles daughter, young lady that, oh God, God bless so mightily. In the tour that we did this weekend, uh, the Trinity Break Every Chain tour, we had it in Las Vegas on this past Saturday. And when I tell you that God broke some chains, my, you see, he healed me. Let me tell y'all. Look, look for the testimony. There's, uh, I made a, um, a live feed and it says testimony. And I give the testimony of how I received my healing. But three segments. What I do is I do my, read poems from my books or poems God has blessed me to, to, to create in between the segments of the other ladies as they speak. So I do my little bit in between. The first time when I stood up to speak, my throat couldn't halfway talk. The mic though, when you see it, when you see the video, you you can't tell it. The voice sounds perfect pretty much on the mic. The first while I couldn't hardly get anything out. And I had more that I wanted to say, but I was so weak in my body until I couldn't stand up. So I hurried up and I sat down. And as I said, I kind of prayed. I'm like, oh, Lord, what, Lord, I'm, I'm doing this by faith and I'm doing what you'd have me to do. And I believe I'm being led to you, but Lord, what is going on with my body? So the next segment when I got up, the second time, it was much clearer. My voice was clear. The body was strong. I was feeling all right. And by the third time I stood up, Hallelujah. I was healed. Totally. Totally. I've been running in it ever since. Man, I do too much. That's my problem. I've been up and Lord, I've been doing everything since I'm healed. I got to slow my roll. But the Lord healed me. And then the people that were at that tour, oh my God, they gave testimonies. Just personal, heart-wrenching, heartfelt, loving testimonies. And then we were graced to be a guest in Valencia's home. And oh my God, so much love. Spiritual peace. Trank, oh, oh, I just can't tell. It was a healing, breaking chain thing for us. Thank you, Valencia. Thank you, Patricia. And thank you, Brother Mark, for the love that was shown in your home. And the Word of God tells me that He will bless those that bless you. And that He will curse those that curse you. So y'all better find somebody to bless because y'all might need them one day. Praise God. And you bless Mama Pam, you're going to be blessed I'm going to bless one. Okay. Uh, Teresa, Teresa, Teresa Antoinette Messenger Wilkins. Thank you. Praise God. I don't know that I that I know you. I'm going to find out. I'll, when I leave here, I'll click and see who my sister Teresa and Anointed Messenger is. Thank you for joining in the broadcast. I broadcast every day. I read for seven minutes so that you don't have to read. I read from a book. Currently reading Understanding the Purpose and Power of Women by Dr. Miles Monroe. And I'm just about finished. I have another book that I asked. I tried to ask the, the, the author if I could read it. But it doesn't matter. I can read it anyway because it's a book. I purchased it and I'm not plagiarized and I'm not trying to get no money from it. I'm just trying to be a blessing to people. Praise God. So um, we'll see. I'll, see. I'll try to get back in touch with him again. But we're just about finished with this book. Okay. So... Love you guys with a God kind of love. See you tomorrow, same time, same place, Lord willing, between noon, the noon hour. Okay? God bless you. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Periscope. Thank you, Periscope, for coming by. Um, I, I don't do much personally addressing to Periscope because I don't find that I have that many followers on Periscope. I left Periscope because Periscope no longer allowed me to um, uh, upload it to YouTube because that's what I like to do. So I went over to Facebook when that wasn't happening and lo and behold, I found out that on Facebook I got people to follow me. I got hundreds of people following me on Facebook. So God knows what he's doing. Praise God. I am Pamela Dobson, aka Mama Pam, aka Pam Poet. Know that Jesus loves you and I love you too. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.